Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth anniversary season of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elishar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elishar, and a chief content producer and writer of jakesick.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. If you're listening to this on any of our audio platforms, please give us a five star rating. Download this episode and more episodes after this conversation. I'm very excited because I have a very exciting guest today. She is a model, and she is one of 2024's Sports Illustrated Rookie Models, and she currently serves on the board of Get Safe. So please help me welcome Dr. Nina Cash to the podcast. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jake. Thanks for having me. (laughs) It's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Cash. Oh, and please, it's, it's Nina. It's Nina. Okay. Okay, Nina. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's great. That's great. So, all right, Nina. So when did you get interested in modeling? Oh, goodness. Well, um, I think, you know, as a little girl, and like a lot of little girls, uh, they thought, oh, modeling would be something really cool (laughs) and really exciting. But um, I was scouted uh, when I was in high school. And uh, my uh, parents, um, well, first of all, let me take a step back. I grew up in a military Filipino Catholic family. And uh, so very conservative. And uh, my parents wouldn't let me model until I was out of high school. So right out of high school in the first part of junior college, um, I was lucky enough to get an agency and do a a little bit of modeling here and there. Um, And yeah, it was a lot of fun until I fell in love and got married and started a family. (laughs) So then I had to put that modeling on the back burner. So yeah, that's how I started with modeling. That's incredible. And that's incredible. So I got to tell you this, guy. it's amazing that this is the first time I had someone from that's part of an anything Sports Illustrated related on my platform. So you are the first and you're breaking some doors. Uh, I Hopefully I won't be the last for you too, Jake. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when did you hear about the Sports Illustrated Rookie Model Contest? Oh, gosh. Well, I had heard about it um, probably when it the search first started about, what was it, seven or eight years ago. Um, it was definitely on my radar um, and thought it was really exciting because MJ Day, the editor-in-chief, was kind of <laughs> flipping the switch on what it was to be a swimsuit model, right? I think in the past there was a stereotype of, of this perfect person that was very hard to achieve for a lot of women out there. Um, and, you know, we all know that um, beauty comes in every shape, size, and color, and, and, and uh, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So it was really nice to see that MJ Day and the whole swimsuit SI Swimsuit family was um, bringing a new light to what it means to be beautiful. And so fast forward to um, last year uh, in December. No, actually, because it's New Year in 2022. Excuse me, because now we're in 2024. (laughs) Um, In December of 2022, my husband and I went back to Australia. My husband's Australian. And um, we decided to spend about a month there because we hadn't been able to go back due to the pandemic. So um, growing up in a military Catholic Filipino family, like I said, I was very modest. And so when we went in December, I don't know, Jake, but if you know this, but it's their summertime. So they're kind of like the opposite of the United States. So in December, that's their summertime. Obviously, it's our winter time. Well, um, because my husband loves to take early morning walks on the beach, I had forgotten to bring my one piece bathing suit from America. And so we went to the local mall and because it's their summertime, literally they were sold out in all the bathing suits in my size and the only bathing suit, Jake, that was left in my size at the local Kmart (laughs) at the local mall was a two-piece leopard bikini, <laughs> which, you know, I had to say, oh my goodness, well, you know, this person here who, you know, wears a one-piece, so I wasn't too thrilled about it, but I thought, okay, we take our our, our walks at 6 a.m. The only person that's going to see me in a bathing suit is my husband and maybe a couple of early morning walkers, so I wasn't too stressed about it. 
So on uh, New Year's Day, we, we took a, a walk and my husband took some candid shots and uh, we enjoyed New Year's Day with our Australian family. And that night we were, you know, looking through my husband's cell phones and we ran across those photos of me in the bikini. And I thought to myself, jokingly, hey, not too shabby for a 56 year old gray haired retired lady. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I kind of chuckled about it. And uh, and then I remember a Sports Illustrated swimsuit search about three years ago when beautiful Kathy Jacobs uh, was named the rookie uh, uh, or the winner. And she was 57 years old. And then I thought to myself, hey, I'm 56. I'm retired. You know what? I, I'm going to submit to this search. And I honestly thought, Jake, that the search and the application process was already over because it was the end of the year. You know, it was January 1st, you know, 2023. And when my husband and I looked online to our utter shock and surprise, uh, as I had, uh, <laughs> had extended the deadline to January 1st in America. And because Australia is a day ahead, well, guess what? I had uh, about an hour to cobble together a video, put those like completely candid <laughs> bikini photos and, uh, and I applied and then the rest is history. That, that's how it happened. <laughs> I gotta say this, for you to put in a video in an hour, that is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. It was, it was kind of like a nail biter too, because my mother-in-law's Wi-Fi was super slow. <laughs> so oh, God, so I hate that. You know, it took like 30 minutes and it was like a nail biter, but I, I made it in, in the nick of time. So, and here and I that, am. <laughs> and that's good, Nina. So Nina, when, so it must've been, so what was your reaction when Sports Illustrated contacted you and said, you are a finalist? Oh, well, you know, it was kind of disbelief. I'm like, is this is this a joke email? <laughs> because, you know, I got the email stating that I was the top 24 about three and a half months after I applied. And to be honest with you, I sort of forgot about it at that moment. You know, so when I got the email, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I am top 24. And then we had an interview and then I made it to the top seven. And then we were told um, that the, all seven of us were going to be in the magazine. And, you know, Jake, I was just thrilled. I, I'm kind of like the mama bear out of the group because I'm about 23 years older than the next oldest <laughs> um, oh, wow. winner, uh, Jenna, who I think just turned 34. So I'm 57. And so they're, they're my babies. All of them are my babies. Uh, you know, they're the age of my three daughters. I have a 31 year old, a 30 year old and a 28 year old. So, um, to say that I wasn't proud of, of the six of them is um, an understatement. Just thrilled and proud that all seven of us have made it. Um, and, and so grateful that MJ and the team, you know, made this uh, exception, <laughs> right? Because this has never been done before in the history of SI. So it's pretty cool. And not to mention, it's a pretty big milestone for SI. 60th anniversary swimsuit issue. Yes, 60th, 60 years. And you know, there's a memory, Jake, that I have that's very distinct in my mind. I was a senior in high school in 1984, 40 years ago. And I remember seeing Cheryl Teagues on the cover of Sports Illustrated and thinking, number one, how gorgeous is she? And number two, how amazing it would be to, to be on the cover or even just to be in the magazine. And there is no way, Jake, that that 17 year old girl in 1984 would ever imagine that I would be here right now. I'm going to be in the magazine. It is, you know, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's like, it's magic, right? It's magical. And it's definitely full circle too. It's like a full circle moment. Yeah. Yeah, 40 years. A, a 57 year old is going to be in SI. Now, you know, we've got Martha Stewart and Mae Musk. They've all done it, right? And it's um it, it's wonderful, you know. Um, and so for me to kind of follow in their footsteps, it's such an honor. It's such an honor. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So that that issue, I believe, is coming out in March. Uh, I think it's May. The May, May, May. Yeah, May. It's May issue that's gonna it's gonna be coming out. So uh, very soon, and and you know, it's really kind of cool. It's um because. We're all still kind of have this anticipatory excitement because we won't know who, uh, well, first of all, what pictures that they're going to have chosen to be in the magazine. And then number two, who's going to get to be on the cover, right? So um, it's really neat to be like a 57-year-old person having feelings like a five-year-old the night before Christmas, right? Because it's been a long time since I've had those like little kid feelings of anticipation and excitement and magic. So, you know, this Sports Illustrated journey has certainly been um, just a wonderful experience for me. And uh, who knows, you're going to inspire another generation. Hope so. Hope so. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. It's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I got to say this. I got I got to say that we have a lot to do with, with how did you get involved with Gate, Get Safe organization? How did I get involved with Get Safe? Yes. Yes. We're, I'm so sorry for the transition from sports. Oh, that's okay. To Get Safe. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking about Get Safe. It's dear to my heart. So I was introduced to Get Safe back in 1999. And for those who don't know about Get Safe, Get Safe is a nonprofit organization founded by um, Stuart Haskin. And the mission of Get Safe is to educate, advocate, and empower community members to live more violence-free lives. So um, we've created various um, programs that um, target campus, um, corporations, law enforcement, um, survivors of sexual and physical assault, as well as people with um, disabilities, both intellectual and physical disabilities. Um, and I want to say that my specialty is, but what I primarily focus on is persons with um, intellectual disabilities. So I've been volunteering with them well since 1999. And um, for the last uh, what about five years, I've uh, been on their board. And I have seen some really um, incredible things happen with Get Safe training. One of the things that I'd like to share, and I'm looking at the time, and hopefully I have a little bit of time, but it's something that's really important. That about 24, 20 years ago or so, um, we developed a program that would help um, train not only persons with intellectual uh, disabilities about sexual assault and crimes, but also agencies that helped um, persons who were victims of uh, sexual assault and crimes. One of the agencies that we worked with was called SACA, which is a sexual assault crisis agency. And there was one here in Long Beach where I lived. And you know, when we met with those folks at SACA, they would tell us about stories how, you know, they would get a lot of crank calls because you can imagine if there's a hotline, you're going to get a lot of people who are dumb and think it's funny to, you know, make pretend like they've been, you know, sexually assaulted. So there was a lot of quote unquote crank calls. And so we educated them about the different populations and communities that could potentially be calling them and need their help. Now, also, at the same time, we were teaching persons with intellectual disabilities about um, boundaries, uh, about sexual assault and different things of that nature. And one day we received a call from SACA stating that there was a, a woman who called who had intellectual disabilities that normally they would think was a crank call. But because of our training, they listened to this person and come to find out this person, um, she was 22 years old. And in the state of California, um, you know, you could be 22 years old and still ride the yellow bus to school. So you, you can still go to school until you're 22 years old. So she was taking the yellow bus to school and come to find out the bus driver had been sexually assaulting um, the, the girls on the bus. And she was able to articulate that and, and, and call SACA for help. And SACA, because of our training, listened to her, followed through, the authorities were contacted, and then that person um, who did that horrible, horrible crime um, was tried and prosecuted and sent to jail. So it's things like that that I'm extremely proud of and and you know, get safe, especially because 
they really are proactive and they want to make the community more safer. And so there's many more stories that I could tell you, but I'm looking at the time. But if people want to know more about Get Safe, please, it's GetSafeUSA.com and you can learn more about it. So thank you for giving this space to, to uh, shine a light on that. I appreciate it, Jake. You're so welcome. And it's amazing for all the incredible work that you've done with, with that. It's just absolutely amazing. I wish we had more time for that. But I know we got to finish up on a lighter note because I was getting doing some research and one of my you real and one of your dreams is not just to be on Sports Illustrated, but there's a certain ballroom that's gonna be seen on ABC <laughs> and Disney Plus that you wanna go on. And so I'm, you want to be part of the one of the Dancing with the Stars cast in the future. So if you had the opportunity to compete on the show, which pro, past or present or current, would be your dream partner and why? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, yes. Dancing with the Stars. Oh, I would love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So there are wonderful. They are all wonderful. Okay, simply fantastic. I mean, in the past, there's Tony Davalani, and then of course Max um, Shervosky, um, Shurkovsky. I want to make sure I say his name right. Max Shurkovsky. Max Shurkovsky. Oh, by the way, um, I interviewed both Tony and Max. Did you? Oh my gosh! Way so back so in the day, you guys, you can listen to the, you can read the interviews on Jake's take Jake says shake Yes. Oh my gosh! And I'm going to do that right after this. Um. So I would love my top two right now that are current are Artem and Val. So I would love to dance with either of them. It would be an honor or privilege. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just get excited about thinking about it. Maybe, maybe that dream will come true too. We'll see. And besides, both of them won the Mirror Ball Trophy. So you could probably get the London Mirror Ball of Tro Trophy as well. Wow. That would be awesome. That would be fantastic. You know, my mom and dad, um, they have since passed away, but we used to watch it. It was our family night with my parents and we used to watch it and just, uh, just love it because my dance, my parents were such great dancers. They were smooth. They, you know, grew up in the forties. And uh, so they, they did all the, you know, the type of like swing dancing and the foxtrot and all that stuff. And so, yeah, it'd be kind of like dancing in their honor if I had that opportunity. That would be amazing, Nina. So, Nina, last question. Where can my audience connect with you on social media? Ah, uh, so I'm on Instagram, and you have to pardon me, folks. I'm still getting the hang of Instagram. My my kids are helping me with it. <laughs> so I am at underscore Nina Cash underscore on Instagram. So you can DM me with any questions. Um, if you you know want to get a hold of me, um, yeah, through Instagram right now. Awesome. So guys, if you miss an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elias Show podcast. Visit our channels on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podchaser, Spotify, and Spreaker. Jake's Take with Jacob Elishar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and YouTube. Jacob Elishar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And guys, if you want to read my interviews with Tony and with Max, it's jakes-take.com. Once again, jakesashake.com, you'll find my take on new music, what happened with The Masked Singer, Season 10, what's currently going on with America's Got Talent Fantasy League, and much more. jakesashake.com. Nina, it was a pleasure talking with you, and congratulations on everything. Oh, thank you so much, Jake, and have a wonderful new year. Thank you so thank much, you. and guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Good.